Syracuse, New York, 1989. The famous scarab vase by Adelaide Alsop Robineau disappeared. It was discovered that thieves stole away the vase and vanished into the night. No one knew where it went and if the Mona Lisa of the ceramic world would ever return. I've watched thee, scarab. Yea, an hour in vain I've watched thee, slowly toiling up the hill, pushing thy lump of mud before thee still, with patience infinite and stubborn strain. Strive as thou mayst, spare neither time nor pain, to screen thy burden from all chance of ill. Push, push with all a beetle's force of will. Thy ball, alas, rolls ever down again. The scarab vase celebrated the unknown craftspeople of the world. These craftsmen and women were stonecutters, metalsmiths, potters, and fiber artists. Many are only now titled in art museums and books as the unknown. Robineau spent 1,000 hours sculpting her famous scarab vase. The work was influenced by the Art Deco movement and Egyptian revival, which was motivated by the opening of King Tut's tomb in 1922. But like all beautiful masterworks of art, there are always problems and solutions that lead up to the masterpiece. Adelaide Alsop Robineau excelled in a world that was led and dominated by male artists in the craft art movement. She was not without her peers, as other artists like her also began to excel and organize in their field. The Women's Guild of Arts, established in 1907, provided a platform for female artisans to collaborate, make connections, and gain professional status. It included Mary May Morris, a jeweler and embroiderer, Marie Zimmerman, a jeweler, Julia Morgan, the first licensed female architect in California, Florence Kohler, a jeweler, and Adelaide Robineau, a ceramicist. Adelaide Alsop was born in Middleton, Connecticut in 1865. As a young art student, she studied painting with William Merritt Chase and also began learning china paints. Her abilities as a china painter and watercolor artist were recognized, and she was given the opportunity to both teach and exhibit her work. Adelaide studied ceramics in summer school with Charles Binns at Alfred University in upstate New York. As a young woman, she moved to Syracuse, New York, met Sam Robineau, and fell in love. Sam was a French potter and ceramicist and started a ceramic studio magazine in Syracuse. Sam and Adelaide were soon married and had three children. Adelaide was a loving mother. Once, her daughter had torn her stocking. Adelaide repaired the stocking with a decorative spiderweb stitch to close up the tear. Adelaide continued to practice ceramics and china painting and experimented with porcelain clay bodies and carving elaborate forms. Sam encouraged her to not use the standard blanks and create her own forms to work from. She would carve with a metal crochet needle. Not all experiments work. And accidents sometimes happen. After spending a thousand hours carving the vase, decorated with hundreds of scarabs, the piece cracked during its first firing. Most potters would be devastated, but she knew how to repair it by packing the crack with fire clay mixture and firing the piece again. The scarab vase was produced while Adelaide was teaching at the American Women's League in University City, Missouri, and it went on to win the grand prize in pottery at the Turin International Exhibition in 1910. While this brought her fame, she continued to teach and maintain a studio, Robineau Pottery. The University of Syracuse honored her with a doctorate in 1917, and she taught classes there from 1920 to 1929. 
When the Metropolitan Museum of Art began purchasing contemporary ceramics, her work was the first to be acquired, and after her death, she became the first artist potter given a retrospective there. Adelaide Alsop Robineau began work on her final piece, The Cinerary Urn. It was never completed, as she passed away in 1929, and her husband Sam died soon after. Having both passed into the afterlife, they joined together again in the very urn she created for them. Much of the Robineau collection was sold to the Everson Museum. And in 1968, a young Chinese-American architect, I.M. Pei, was hired to design the new Everson Museum building. The crown jewel of the Everson was missing. The thing that tripped up the thieves was a Polaroid picture they took of the artwork. They brought it to antique collectors around New York City to try to sell the vase. One antique collector knew of the piece and contacted the FBI. The vase was soon returned and put into storage until it was time for it to return for public viewing. On April 27, 1990, the Great Scarab Vase was put back on display at the Everson Museum. After an arduous journey, the vase had found its way home.